guys, it's Minx here. Hope you're doing well. And welcome to a new game. This is The Slaughter, and this is the first act. The, the only act that's currently available. Uh, this is a murder mystery sort of slasher point-and-click game set in Victorian London. And it came second on the game was voting for the month of May. Uh, Left Alone came number one. If you want to get involved and vote on what games I play each month, you can do so by hitting the support me link in the description right now. And... Uh, Get involved with the community on Game Whisper. It's been growing and growing and really awesome. So thank you very much for your support, guys. Are you ready for ridiculous Cockney accents? Because that's what we're going to get in this playthrough. Let's begin. Begging your pardon? Uh, so I did a little playtest and seen this in already. This guy here is actually a little kid. A rich kid. And um, they're not very nice. And this is us on the floor here coughing and spluttering. Shouldn't you keep a, be up a chimney somewhere? Always a clown, eh, Sydney? Salus, show our friend your sense of humour. <laughs> Still laughing, Sydney? I'm trying not to. <coughs> but that squeaky voice of yours is making it difficult. I better make it squeakier, guys. You're impressing no one! Salus! You see, Sydney, this ain't the day to wind up, Charlie Finch. Do you know why? Um, another beating. <laughs> that inebriated <coughs> mother <coughs> gave you another bit. Oh. Mrs. Finch's drinking habit say none of your worry. Now I'll tell you why. The ugly muck of yours intruded on my dream last night, and I take particular offence to that. Intrusions upon my dreams. The boss likes his dreams. That's right, Salis. So when you can imagine my displeasure when I found you playing with these bad credit in my gambling house? That you'd have the nerve to do such a thing after last night's intrusion? Teach him to keep his nose out of my dreams, Salis. Ooh, we're getting the shit kicked out of us. Perhaps quite literally. So what have we learned? Um. Uh. <coughs> you. Scrubber. Kick him till he shits his ribs. And once again, I'll plunge to a new depth. Have my internal organs reshuffled at the command of a child? I suppose it's as good a death as I'm likely to receive. This looks pretty painful. Pretty sure we might... What the blazes is that? Looks like a woman with a knife to me. Boss it! It's the Ripper! Let's get the hell out of here! I'm not sure it's the Ripper. She doesn't look too rippy. Some very click clonky boots though. Clink clonky? It's not even a word. Clip cloppy? You poor soul. You didn't worry those cars are gone. I have a carriage waiting. Where do you live? I live at 21 Drummond Street, Summers Town. Ugh. You have to come back to mine, yes? I guess we're not strong enough to speak right now. 
Off we go. Oh, we've got some music. Nice little coach ride as we go through the moonlit streets of London. Or London. Is that, that's how you say it properly. London. So, yeah. Um, I don't know much about this game other than it's like a pixel adventure game. It looks pretty good, though. Um, hopefully, you guys will enjoy it. Sid Thomas is not far from here. I could take you there for treatment. No hospital. As you wish. Can't say I blame you. It's a beautiful night, not a cloud to be seen. Why would a man seek trouble on a night like this? I suppose you have your reasons. That little doggy is so, so cute. Such a cute, not far to go now. A cute doggy. I don't know who this woman is. Maybe she's taking me back to her place. To, maybe she is the Ripper. Maybe she's taking me back to her house to fucking murder me. It's in Paul's Cathedral. Two people just sitting there. I imagine that. Oh, that's pretty dangerous to me. If, like, a horse and carriage lost control, they'd probably be fucked. Or, at the very least, catch cholera from the water if they fell in. The slaughter. This is that one I said. Uh, there'll be two more acts, I believe, but I'm not quite sure when they're coming out. Hopefully, they will come out. We'll better continue this through this whole story over the course of the year. I guess we're waking up in a. Eh, I guess it's not too bad. Wallpaper's a bit shit, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. A touch less rouge, perhaps. Oh, you alive? That's a matter of opinion. How are you feeling? I never felt better, like a new man. Oh. That's a completely natural sound. Your eyes are warring. Tears of joy, I assure you. How did I get here? I carried you in with the help of a disgruntled cabbie. You want to receive an end of a roll of thorough thrashing. You really must have twisted his knickers. That big oaf was just following orders. It was a hell-born urchin that ordered the thrashing. Not a fan of children. Never underestimate the wickedness of youth. Did he have good cause? Everyone feels they have good cause. Though I suppose there were certain circumstances which placed me on his less forgiving side. I'm sure you'll be back on your feet in no time. And diving into certain circumstances again, Mr. Uh... Sidney Emerson. I feel I've yet to earn the Mr. Sidney Emerson. A killer name? Are you an inventor by any chance? Uh, no. Unfortunately, not. Though I did once tie a washcloth to my cat's paws so that he could clean as he walked. Hmm, they're simply genius. Why, thank you. Funny my mother and encourage such inventive behaviour. And what is it to you? What is and what is it you do? I thought a man in your line of work would have guessed by now. After all, a private detective. Ha, perhaps you should be my apprentice. How did you know? 
just a guess. Must have rifled through my pockets. And might I hazard a guess that you're not sprucing up for a midnight ball? No, Sydney, I'm preparing for work, as you very well know. So she's a prostitute, obviously. I assume you'll need me to leave. You needn't bother. I keep my living and working quarters separate. In fact, you're the only man to ever have slept in my personal chambers. I don't suppose the men do much sleeping in your line of work. Oh, she seems a bit pissed off with that. I apologise. That was ungentlemanly of me. You never claimed to be one. I'm just teasing, Sydney. Nah, she looked pissed off to me. Compared to the most of my clients, you are not in the realm. Sir Emerson. Doesn't quite fit. Especially after I've been made to look like the damsel in distress. A disgraceful reversal of the God given roles. How would our young knight live with the shame? It's not what I. Love to follow the mere mention of his name through the streets of London. To have been saved by a lowly strumpet. For shame. Right every humorous and well delivered. A generous review. Ha! You're well on her in tongue, I dare say. You were raised far from these streets. You're not working now, detective. Giving you the wrong accent for that. Get some sleep and we'll talk when I return. Nonsense, I don't need any. <coughs> well, that'd be. Maybe 40 weeks. Good man. Got my voices mixed up a bit there. Yeah, get some sleep, detective. You'll be fine. Be careful out there tonight. And we are falling into a sleep. And we wake up dead. End of the game. Uh huh. Uh huh. We appear to be. I'm assuming we're dreaming. Seeing as this seems to be completely fucking mental. Anything new to report? We're talking to a fish. Even the breadcrumb trail won't lead you out of this one. Okay. We have a talking fish. I do not know anything else. We have a book. That we are apparently reading. He always picks up the book, the fool. Turning it over in his hands like a Neanderthal. He attempts to read words in hand, unintelligible to him. What the fuck is that? Can I get a light over here? I'm afraid not, old chap. Budget cutbacks again? It's something like that. So we can't read the book, I guess. What's this? Our feeling is purely ornamental. For your intents and purposes, it is. I don't even know what the fuck it is. Oh, it's like a tap that's dripping. Okay. It's a magic lantern. Like a projector? What the fuck is a magic lantern? I mean, it's not like Aladdin's magic lantern, that's for fucking sure. I don't have a slide. Okay, we need to find a slide to put in the projector, I guess. It would be British to pull them apart in an improper manner. It seems years since I last drew them. I guess that's the window, I don't fucking know. And then the cupboard down here. There is a plant pot on the ceiling, I just noticed, and the drip is going upwards into the plant pot. Hmm. It's been bricked up. It's warm enough as it is. That's the wrong voice again. I can't get all you mixed up. Okay. I can hardly float up to it. Can't you? 
I think I should be able to, considering that I just, like, uh, floated up to it before. I can't even swear that was potted in there. Okay, so... This is, like, really surreal. When does the book become at home when the volume is increased? It's pretty fucking awful. Oh, there's something there. What was that? Is that a slide? Let's put the slide in. Okay. A contraption primarily for the amusement of children. The magic lantern finds its target audience as he fiddles with the slide, shooting it to gaze upon the wall. Oh, it's like a, it's like a, yeah, it's like a projector, right? What is that picture of? Such striking features. Yeah. Yeah, she has, hasn't she? Well, that just grew out the wall, so let's use the curtain to go behind. And that door just flew out the wall. Great. Perhaps a Persian wilderness? Don't you have somewhere to be? Suppose I do. We go back to bed then. I can't reach that. That's a shame, it's ever so cozy. <laughs> Okay, so what do I do? Use the book? Oh no, there's a teleport on the floor and I'm just blind. Teleporter, take me out of here. There we go. That's the easy way of getting back into bed. No one's here. Chapter 1. That was the prologue. Really weird little dream sequence there, like really surrealist. Christ, is that my head? Police! Open the door! She's gonna be dead as fuck, isn't she? That's a relief. Oh my god. The police! Yeah, we're in serious shit. Open the door! There's no one in, you don't! Where's the bastard landlord with the keys? So yeah, we're gonna be in the bed of a murdered prostitute. I think that's my cue to leave. I better get dressed. Where's our fucking clothes? Okay. 53 seconds later. <laughs> that's a very quick change. Uh. It's locked. Great. Okay, but yeah, look through everything. Inspector the laundry. I'm not a pervert. Where the fuck is it gonna be? Open dresser. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Hurry! Oh god, the guy fell down the stairs. That's good. Nothing I feel obliged to steal. Okay. Use coat. The finest cut is still at a several row. That's great and everything. Lamp. Smash the window with the lamp. Oh, I know. Use lamp on the lock. I'll open oil it up. I'll unscrew the oil cap. There we go. I'm glad the police are fucking incompetent. There we go. It's unlocked. Let's get the fuck out of here. I better put the lamp back. Fuck. Put it back. Come on. We haven't got all day. There you go. Get out the window. Go, go, go. Now to make my flawless escape. That was far from flawless. That was me fucking around big time. Great. Well done. Well done. Got a feeling this guy's a little bit, uh, I think the technical term is fucking competent. No one saw him walking past the windows. I'll thank her later. She's dead. She is without a doubt dead, which is why the police are showing up at the fucking apartment. Wow, my place is pretty nice compared to that other place.
Home again. I see very little's changed. I guess we should look around. There's a note on the floor here, which is obviously relevant to the main story. Sydney, my dear. Please do attend to your rent arrears of two months. It chills me to think of such a fine gentleman as yourself being cast into the unforgiving breast of the streets. Yours ever faithfully, Eldon Colchester. Well, we're certainly behind on our rent, and that looks like gin. It's a bit early for that. Don't want our gin right now. Samuel Harding did knowingly engage in extramarital relations with one Prudus Kendall. Okay, so we're a private investigator, like we're researching into like affairs and shit for people. Nothing of relevance. I'm afraid if I open it, I won't be able to close it again. There's nothing of use in here, just bills. Got our bathroom here, lovely. Have a nice shit. I could use a toilet, but you know. I look pretty terrible. Still ruggedly handsome, though. Oh my god. I don't want to carry a damn towel. Almost Australian, that damn towel. Maybe later. Alright, um, I guess in here is not the place to be. What's this book on our desk here? I'd rather not read about the misery of others. Though it does help raise spirits. Five pounds reward, whereas the night of Tuesday, our beloved Glen of Imar Terrier did wander astray from the home of Mrs. Doris Perkins in Kentish Town area. Notice is hereby given that a reward of five pounds will be paid upon its safe return to 14 Drummond Road, Kentish Town. So we'll keep an eye out of that dog. Hunting mongrels for meagre rewards. I can't say it's a laugh I imagine, but I've got rent to pay. I guess that's what we're going to do. We're going to go and look for the dog. Can we just leave? I think the alleyway floor must need airing out. I'm not going anywhere about washing my face. Really? God, yeah, I can't go out. I've got to wash my face. I might lose my apartment, but, you know, got to prioritise. I think I'll be needing some soap. Are you fucking kidding me? There's the soap. Cleanliness is next to godliness. I just realised there's a fucking eye looking at me through a peephole in the wall. There! There was definitely an eye there. That's creepy as fuck. Yeah, well, we got some soap in our inventory. There we go. Damn, I forgot to ask her name. I always do that. Alright. Now we can go outside. If that much anywhere near, it'll be in Regent's Park. Somewhere, think about that place attracts the lesser species. I like Regent's Park. That's our creepy landlord, I guess. Sydney, my boy. Ah, hello, Mr. Colchester. You look utterly dreadful. <laughs> Whatever happened? Nothing really, just a nasty fall. You must be careful, my boy. We two are alike in more ways than you know. I've seen your penis. <laughs> uh, this is creepy as fuck. Both bruised like a ripe peach. Is he hitting on me? I don't know, this is awkward as fuck. I'm late for an appointment. I really must be going. Don't become a stranger. You must stop in for a splash of gin. Soon, Mr. Colchester. I'll be going now. I don't... I guess he is... Spying on us? He was spying on... I see... I told you, Sydney. Call me Eldon. We must do away with the formalities. Yes. We must. I must consider the fresh air compared to Colchester's vapours. Let's have a look around for a dog, I guess. Atch. 
Something bit me. It seems to be inhabited. So the dog might be in there, I guess? It looks like it probably is. Especially as this is the script, the scene, so... Uh... Not interested. I think it wants something meatier. How do we get something meatier? Can we just leave? I can't leave whilst that dog is still at large. Well, it's not that at large. It's in a fucking bush right in front of you. Okay, so what can we do with the stick? Carbolic site. What does carbolic mean? I don't actually know. Walk to part. Oh, there's an extra area this way. Oh, an eel cellar. Okay. Hello there, upstanding citizen. What delights are in store today? Eels. Uh, I'll take that jelly of the eels if you please. Look at the fucking flies around them. That's disgusting. A penny. Daylight robbery. Where'd you get your stock? They're locally caught. I love supporting local produce. Fresh in the Thames this morning. That sounds disgusting. I wish I hadn't asked. Yeah, the Thames is not a nice river. As business. Bad and sewer flushing. Suppose their smells aren't quite as offensive. Less rats here too. Ah, so it does have its perks. Rats don't answer back when you hit them with a shovel. I'll take your word for that. You wouldn't have seen a small dog lately. That mongrel ate off my stock when I was off having a slash. That, that's a piss, if you guys don't know, by the way. Where did it go? I don't know, but I find him there's going to be a new special on the menu. Right. Any signs of my canine friend? I told you, I ran that little bastard off. Let's talk to this demonic looking child here. He's busy swinging. I think I'll stay on the beaten track. Okay, so I can't go to the clearing. Good morning, Cherub. Piss off, Grandad! Shouldn't you be in school? Provide the school in for me and Oxy. And what is today's subject? Provide mathematic equations. Oh, is that so? Ox, what's two plus two? Uh, which one's two again? Simply a standing. Have any of you ragamuffin seen a dog? Look, Randall, there ain't no muffin. The handle is Albert. You're really asking me if I've seen a dog in Regent's Park? Specifically, this dog. Don't recognise him. Her, I think. That's a fine swing. That's my handiwork. The bomb the brain and ox is the brawn. Let's have a go on it. Uh, what do you think, Ox? Should be good for a laugh. We're going to like ruin ourselves on this. We've already like fractured our ribs. It's going to break, right? Yep. Sorry about that. Well, that went well. Oh, I got some eels. Okay. Eels on a stick. A hearty snack for short-armed individuals. 
I thought we didn't have the money. I thought we were going to have to do something else. Oh. Alright, I guess we got that. We got an eel kebab to lure the dog out with. Let's see. Probably isn't even the fucking dog. Looks like a dog to me. Bing guy. Stay, girl. Now I need some way to take her home. It's no escape now, Matt. Now let's get you back to your senile owner. Awesome, that was actually quite easy. Got the monies, got everything done there. Wait! Oh, for fuck's sake. That's my dog! I'm sorry, sir. Can't let you pass. God damn it! I'll thank you not to blaspheme in the presence of ladies, sir. What have I done to deserve such luck? Hello, I'm Sidney Emerson. And who's that then? Well, I'm just... Look, the shop is closed till further notice. But I don't want to buy anything. Get because I'm not selling anything. What's the commotion? i tell you what the commotion is. A couple of blue balls think they can push me around. Bloody pigs. Now, what happened in the alley? Oh, someone stuffed it. A murder, I guess. Why do you think it's a murder? Ain't too easy to cut your own throat. Weren't no shaving accident, I'll tell you that. Who was killed? Not sure, it wasn't me who found the body and I ain't one for prying. We found the body? I don't know, what's the matter? No, I suppose it doesn't really. You don't seem too happy, what's wrong? There's peace roaring me around like some kind of crook. There, I'm about to close shop for the day. They made you close? They didn't make me. But a man's welcome in bad luck opening shop with a dead body around the corner. When are you opening again? Not today, that's for sure. Take it easy. Oh, well, that was relevant to anything, but... And a bird just shot on me, are you fucking kidding me? Well, this ain't been a peachy morning. <laughs> Hopping from one disaster to another. To blaze with this, I need a pint. So we lose the dog, we don't get the money. And our friend's been murdered. The Crimson King. Hang on, hang on, hang on. In a traditional pub here. Alright, landlord, part of the usual. What's the usual then? It kind of defeats the object if I have to tell you. Whatever you say, mate. What's on tap? A hell of cider. What about cider? This month, I guess cider is Chuggy Peg. A sharp of fruity delight straight from the orchards of Somerset to your mouth. And then into my bloodstream. I'll have the chubby pig. Chuggy peg. Bless you. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I quite like this. The writing in this is pretty funny. Obviously, it'd be better if it was voiced, but this was done on a really small budget, so you know. Oh god, are we having another dream? A few rounds later. I am fucking wrecked. Tom, gentlemen, please. That means you. How about one more for the ride? I think you've had a few too many as it is. 
I'm almost at more magic number. Don't make me come around this bar. All right, all right. This place is dead anyway. Wow, I don't feel too good. Oh god, I am fucking wrecked. Can I throw up? Yeah, lovely. Well, probably wasn't the best way of dealing with our problems. And we're dreaming again. In a pool of our own vomit. Right, let's look at this dream sequence then. I still have invested in that sun at. I'm far too big to fit through. Oh, the mouse went away. I'll come out again probably when we get further away, right? Maybe not. Let's talk to the fish again. How long will you keep drinking like a frog? Until I croak. That was a really bad joke. Guess the book again. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I could really use a light. Hold your horses. I recall reading this when I was first published, though I fear I was slightly too old. Never too old for a good book. There we go, we're going to shrink and go through the rabbit hole, I guess. Or well, the fireplace in this instance. It's empty. Alright, we, uh... We hold it under the tap, right? Jeez. Drink that and shrink. Yep. I was right all along. Curiouser and curiouser. Let me go through the mouse hole. Fireplace. Whatever it is, there was a fucking mouse there, so I'm saying it's a mouse hole. Okay, guys. Where the fuck are we? Oh, God. It's where the body is. This is pretty grim. We're gonna like come across the body ourselves or what? Well, I mean, we obviously are. I guess we just crawled up here from the pub, probably. Yes, I know. At least I still have my self awareness. That's one thing I can pride myself upon. I'm constantly observing my declining behaviour as if I if through a looking class. Just not entirely sure what to do about it. Are you? I'm sorry, I don't suppose manners have even been an issue for you. I suppose we ought to keep composed until the very end. I'll be one of the decrepit few lurking in some damp corner of the local public house. Condensing a lifetime of poor decisions into a few unintelligible slurs. That sounds about right. This is like a fucking acid trip. Where the fuck are we? This must be our bedroom because I didn't go in there at the house. My head is throbbing. Chapter 2. Guess we're going to go out of here. Oh, we've got to knock at the door. Sounds like business. Quickly, better pretend that you actually know what the fuck you're doing. Some other cunt probably handed that dog in as well. Emerson? I don't know what his voice this is. What? Who? I mean, yes, that's me. Is it a check or not? I can't see. Okay. Please do take a seat. I'll be with you in one second.
You gotta wake the fuck up, dude. Sharpen up, sharpen up. You got a fucking customer. You got a fucking. Can't afford to lose this one. Stay calm, stay couth. What the fuck does couth mean? I. How may I help you, Miss, uh. Miss Polly Marwood? No, excuse my curtness. I've been travelling throughout the night and the road south is not smooth. You are excused, I assure you. Good. Let's go straight to the matters of importance. My sister, a resident of the city, passed away two days ago under the natural circumstances. A murder? Yes, but Mrs. Emerson's not your concern. But Mr. Emerson, that's not your concern. As this is a rather peculiar case, the police have taken it upon themselves to deny me any of the possessions she carried at her time of death. To be the sister of the prostitute, right? This is an issue as my sister had with her a family heirloom, a silver plated pendant inlaid with a garnet. I see no logical reason to deny me this item. I suspect one of the officers intends to keep the pendant to sell at market. You skilled in the art of information and property retrieval, is this correct? I'm sorry, I, I mean pardon? The retrieval of property through covert means. Information retrieval, yes, but property? I'm not a thief, Mrs Marwood. I'm not asking you to steal, Mr. Emerson. I'm asking you to retrieve an item of jewellery which belongs to my family. Can you do this for me? Retrieving an item from police possession? It's not the most advisable of tasks. I'm willing to pay you £10 in advance and a further £50 upon my receipt of the pendant. That's £60 in total. That is correct, Mr. Emerson. Try not to smile. Remain calm. I'm still listening, Mrs. Marwood. Good. Being unmarried, my sister can be found under my maiden name of Fairchild. Alice Fairchild. As the funeral is not for another two days, and this is a high interest case, I would assume her cadaver is still being held at a mortuary. So I'm unsure as to which one. I'm sure you'll have no trouble obtaining this information. Here's a ten pound advance and the address at which you can find me. I don't remember saying yes. You're fucking saying yes, you need that fucking money. You didn't bother walking me outside. Goodbye, Mrs. Marwood. I'm sorry for your loss. Sixty pound! That's what he does a lot afterwards. Crush, she's a hard nosed woman if I've ever seen one. Utterly emotionless, unsurprisingly very wealthy. Sixty pounds, it's almost double my year's rent. I suppose I have my unfortunate sister to thank, a rather morbid thought. Anyway, no time to waste, I think I have a good idea where to start looking. Well, let's get out of it then. Now, where'd I leave that coat of mine? Oh god, yeah, what the fuck did you do with your coat? Where the fuck is your coat? Probably in the bedroom, I guess. Seeing as that's where we woke up. Liking this so far? It's been locked since I moved in. That's pretty weird. Or I should really ask Colchester for the key. But he might rape you. <clears throat> it's more of a nighttime read. Bed. Sleep is a luxury I can't afford at the moment. Alright, so it's not in here. Like, he's got an oven in his bedroom. That's weird, isn't it? Like, I mean, I know he's not, like, well off or anything, but, you know. What the fuck is this coat? What do you do with it? I'm afraid of life will again. I might be able to close it again. Don't care. Oh, there's this coat. It's in the bath. There you are. It's rather damp with what I can only hope is water. His eye's still there. Fucking Colchester's eye. Peering. Waiting. Watching. Is he going to accost me again? Go. Go, 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 go. Good. We avoided any confrontation.
What the fuck is this? No soliciting included, not in limited to charity petitions, political causes, saleswannery, flimflammery, and religious zealotry. I'm not looking after last time. Pitch on me once, shame on you. Pitch on me twice, shame on me. It's pretty good. <laughs> but this has got quite a lot of like a lot of character to it. I like it. Right, pub, crime scene. I guess we could probably ask the police at the crime scene, right? If they're still there. Yeah. Talk to the Bobby. I see you're still maintaining order. Yes, sir. It's my duty to ensure no one passes through this alley. They must hold you in high regard down at the station. Sarcasm is the lowest form of wit, sir. You clearly never encountered the pun. What happened here? You don't read the papers much, do you, sir? I prefer works of non-fiction. A murder, if you must know. Are you through bothering me? Would you possibly tell me more? I'm sorry, sir. I know very little. You can say that again. Like the fourth wall broken there. What's your interest in this? Who are you exactly? I'm an investigative newspaper reporter. I'd love to get a quote for the front page. On behalf of the Metropolis Police Service, it's a tragedy to see such a long life extinguished. Any word on where the autopsy will be conducted? I cannot divulge sensitive information at this time. And this month's hot fashion trends? The large bus that's coming to see a comeback. With blue remains the colour of the season. Thank you for your insight. That was fucking weird. No, thank you. Well, we didn't even ask for any ID. That's fucking chamber port or vast thing has been everywhere. Hello. Good afternoon, I'm sorry. Have we met before? I don't think so. That's right, you were nosing around the alley yesterday. Ah, uh, yesterday I was chasing my dog. That old chestnut there. Your business is your own, Mr. Uh, Sidney Emerson. What can I do for you, Mr. Emerson? Do you know anything about that murder two nights ago? I've no desire to. Though I couldn't help pick up a few things that Bobby sniffed about outside. What's your interest in this business anyway? I'm a private investigator. The murder is related to a case I'm working on. A private investigator? Tell me, is it exciting as the rag sheets make out? What do they make out exactly? You know, beautiful damsels, the exciting twist of fate, being with a hair's breadth for death. Oh yeah, there's plenty of that. In fact, yesterday I was following the lead to a beautiful female. Stunningly white fur coat. Piercing eyes, the dog. Well kept paws. But at last she left me. The bitch. <laughs> well kept paws. Oh yeah, the complexion of a porcelain doll. I'm afraid my life isn't quite as exciting as yours, but I'll be happy to help you with anything. Um, do you know where the body was taken? I've heard the blue bottles taken about taking a St. Pancras mortuary. St. Pancras, thank you. Enough questions for now? You've been very helpful. Bye. Right, I guess we're going to go to the mortuary. That has definitely made my life... We take the jug. The fucking jug. The jug's really bothering me. Don't you want a mannequin? Good, because it's not for Sage. <laughs> it doesn't want any of this shit. Okay. So yeah, I guess go to the map now. We can go to the uh, the mortuary. We know where that is. Getting in is probably going to be easier said than done, right? Though it's not going to be like, oh yeah, come in, look at the body. Lol, 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 lol. Yeah, they don't let me in. I'm just sure you're deceased. Though, don't you have any credible reason to knock on this door? Ah, pleasure to meet you too. Well, 
What is it? What do you want? I require access to the mortuary. Official business, you see. And why on earth would I grant you that? I know the kind of official business which concerns your breed. What is these days? A quid of cadaver? Nah, no, it's not like that at all. He thinks I'm a body snatcher, I guess. Those whose official business are you on? I'm with the Department of Sanitation. I'm following up a report concerning unhealthy conditions in the autopsy room. Unhealthful? Unhealthful, how dare you? I have you know my mortuary is the cleanest in the city. You shan't set one foot in here. You have looked to have been trampled by a manure wagon. I'd really like to come inside. I prefer if you did not. I need to come inside. What you need is a deep bath, preferably an embalming fluid. I'm desperate to come inside. I'm afraid you'll have to void your bowels elsewhere. Actually, I've no desire to come inside. No desire? How dare you? I ought to drag you through this door with the scruff of your neck. This is surreal. But I won't. However, I do demand, command your... Uh, for an admiral attempt. Are you sure I can't enter? You truly are a fine example of the baby-headed breed I've read so much about. Can you at least come outside so we can talk face to face? Usually I'd blaze as much, even for a specimen such as yourself, that I refuse to leave while the torrent falls from the sky. It's just a bit of rain. You may be indifferent to smelling like a damn hound, but I detest the rain. It dulls the senses and weakens the constitution. Why don't you just use an umbrella? These are the hands of an artiste. They must be free to wield the scalpel, the pen, and the bone saw. Not class some grotesque wooden shaft. Alright. Okay, we can't get in there. So long, you'll make a fine cadaver someday, boy. That's pretty weird. Okay, so he's not going to let me in there. Yeah, is there a side ex entrance? It certainly looks a bit like there could be. The grate is hanging on by two screws, but I can't screw it with my hands. I'm not touching that for all the tea in China. Okay, so we need to find something somewhere. Hang on, what's the drain pipe relevant to? I can shimmy up the drain pipe before I'm a chimpanzee, but you're not, so you know. Okay, so we need to find something to unscrew the uh, grate at the side here. Or find a full police officer's disguise. But I assume that even police officers in Victoria times had ID. I don't. I mean, I don't know, but I'm assuming so. Hmm. There's a little varnish left in the tin. What do I need varnish? I refuse to prevent my stick's natural purity. Okay, so that varnish is probably relevant to something later on, I guess, but not at the moment. And we can't pick it up as an individual item. In that state, you're in our way. You have no trouble gaining admittance to a morgue. Probably can't drink the whole thing. Yeah, probably can't. Out of all the toilets. Toilets close you to catastrophic sewage failure. <laughs> Sorry, members' club's closed today. Let's talk to you. I guess I, mean, I don't think there's anything here actually, is there? Didn't expect to see you back so soon. In fact, I'm surprised you're still alive after last night. What do you mean? Last I saw you, alive face and a heap of your own supper. I turned you on your side, and I suppose it worked. Oh well. Thank you. I don't. Don't worry about it, sunshine. It happens to the best of us. Just take it steady next time. Yeah, of course. Now, what can I get you? Do you have any idea how I got home last night? Of course I do, though. You've got the air of a sleepwalker about you. What makes you say that? The look on your face that says you're never quite awake. <laughs> now, I heard about the murder the other night. Bound to pick up a few things behind the bar. Most of it's bound to be all shit. I've had my fair share of horsemen, yeah. A real skill of sifting the truths and half truths from the pile. I hate to admit it, I've been so desperate lately I'd be happy with a quarter truth. That's landing itself, it's a commendable skill, that. 
Truth detection, some will call it. It's something a barman prides himself on. So what's passed through your filter lately? A lot of excitement from the punters in here. They're half open, another girl with snuff gives them something to chat about. Know anything about the latest girl? Well, one sec on second thought, don't worry about it. I'm sure I'll find out soon enough. True enough, it's all in the papers, you care to read them. So you're selling cocktails, how oh, that's working out? Terribly, no one's even willing to give them a try. Got ten crates of oranges that are going to go on the rock. Don't think you're attracting the right clientele for cocktails. If only they've had a sip, they'd be hooked. I'll try a cocktail, what you got? You will? Brilliant. Today's special is the screwdriver. And it's not just because I have a ton of oranges to shift. Sounds good to me. It's a vodka and orange, right? I don't actually drink cocktails very much. I've been served with a little wooden screwdriver inside. <laughs> I didn't have any little wooden umbrellas. It's quite fitting. Oh, we've got a screwdriver for the screws. Holy shit, from drinking a screwdriver. So what do you think? It's delicious. The finest beverage I've ever tasted. You see, too kind. Spread the word, it's a decade of the cocktail. I think he's probably a bit too early. Yeah, we've got a screwdriver. Awesome. Now let's see if we can get inside the actual mortuary then. In the alleyway you go, and let's uh, unscrew us events. Screwed over on the window. Let's see if this works. It's no good, I can feel the screwed over splintering under the strain. Perhaps I can find some means to strengthen it. Okay, we've got to put varnish on the screwdriver from outside the pug and then do it. Lots of backtracking here, but this makes sense. Walk to street. So back to the pub we go. Then we get the screwdriver, put the varnish on the screwdriver. I'll give this a dip. Let's just strengthen it a bit. And then go back to the street. Teleport out. And then we go to... The mortuary again. Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. So far, the hardest thing in the game was leaving the room at the beginning. I'm such a fucking idiot. Let's try this uh, strength and screwdriver here. Voila! It perfection. Whoops, one of the bars came off in my hand. Plus my little cocktail screwdriver shredded to bits. So long, friend, you served me well. I'm not going in there while the mortician's still there. Oh, fuck. What do I have to do to get rid of the mortician? Do, we need, do I need an umbrella? I'm going to check out the other areas quickly first in case there's anything I can pick up, you know what I mean? Because he said... Do I have an umbrella at home? Oh, you can teleport. That's good. I didn't realise this. Oh, that makes things a lot easier. Anything I'm missing in here? Did I miss anything here? No. I don't think there's anything in here, is there? It's going to be like an empty fucking waste of time, this. Let's get the fuck out of here. We're going to need to find the umbrella, though, I think. Just realised that... Is that Hasnick Doy's name? No, it can't be. Oh, maybe it is. That's really creepy if it is, like, the guy... The spying on him. Um, crime scene. An umbrella. A hat. Yeah, that's what it... It's ridiculous. Perhaps it could come in useful. Let's buy the umbrella hat. Hello. How can I help you, Inspector Emerson? I'd like to buy this hat. 
You clearly have an eye for quality, Mr. Emerson. What is it exactly? It's only the latest in Parisian headwear. Finely crafted to keep discerning gents' head as dry as a bone. What's the damage for such a fine piece of craftsmanship? Two shillings. Bye. Okay, we got that now. Let's get the fuck out of here. I'm glad that guy likes us at least. It makes our job a little bit easier. I didn't actually mean to inspect the shop window, but he's going to do it. Do I have to really exit this way? I guess I do. Police officer, stop staring at me. I'm not doing anything wrong. Stop judging me. You can talk for a second, man. Krizum's taking press out for a walk in case I accidentally leave this bit in the video. It's clean now. Just go upstairs and she'll follow. Maybe. Oh, she's going. Go find mummy. Go find mama. No, not me, mama. Call her. Good girl. Press is so long, guys. I love her so much. I have Quizm too, obviously, but I have Prezzo and Quizm. It's pretty gay, but pretty numb. Anyway, let's try and get this prick out of here. Gonna skip through this till we get some better dialogue. Okay. So I, I, do I use the hat on the door? Is that the best bet? Yeah, let's let me do. Why do you hound me? I can't remember his voice. I found a perfect attraction for you. I wholly doubt it. It's the wrong voice. So I, it's an umbrella which has been judiciously attached to a hat. Now you can walk on molested by the rain and keep those precious hands of yours free. That sounds simply astounding. Will you touch this wondrous contraption for me? But of course. I never felt so free in my life. I never test his beauty on the streets. Oh, he's addicted now. I'm stuck. Take this infernal contraption off, would you? Sorry, but I'm late for an appointment. Oh, so leaving him stuck. I could feel my brains. What the fuck? Yeah, let's go down the alleyway. We've now trapped the mortician, so we can go and look at this body without any hassle. So it's going to be the girl from the beginning, obviously. We all know this, right? Like this is like clearly obvious plot point 101. I'm looking for under this. I'm looking under the ones. I'm sure it's her. Okay. Toe tag. Oh, Alice Fairchild. Okay, so we know it's her then. You're making a lot of noise, dude. Here we go. It's going to be the girl from before, the red-haired chick. You know this isn't necessary. Come on, just do it, dude. Come on. You're only delaying the inevitable. <gasps> I'll thank her later. Alice. It's a wonderful name. Her throat has been torn quite ferociously. Okay. So he doesn't recognise her? I'm pretty sure it must be her, but he doesn't recognise her, it looks like. Let's search for this thing. I can't tell whether they're for work or pleasure. The arms are placed behind the head of, as if lounging. The legs were drawn up to the feet, testing on the ground. The knees turned outwards. The face was turned to the left side. The throat had been severed from ear to ear, down to the vertebrae, and larynx removed from, with precision. The shoes were removed, presumably after death, due to pristine condition of the feet. There were no other injuries to the body except for bruising of the wrist and jaw, probably inflicted by pressure of fingers. So that's how she died. Which is pretty grim. Alice's possessions are in box 11. 
We took a cigar. Uh, okay, so where do we find box? Okay, property boxes. Here we go. Box 11 we're looking for, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The locket and a cigarette case. Alright, let's get the fuck out of here then. Oh god, I'm being sick, Jesus. I need a bath. This is pretty gay. I'll give Polly the locket tomorrow. She says she's staying in her sister's flat. I don't think there's any need for me to read the address she wrote down. If she can't know I've been there before. She mustn't know I've met Alice. I see no positive reaction to sharing that fact. Okay, so you do recognise her. It's pointless. Coincidental. I'll give Polly the locket tomorrow. Get the rest of my pay. I well earned fifty pounds. Maybe I'll treat myself to a new overcoat. Exciting times, Victorian times. A new overcoat, top of the buy list, with a leather lapel. Silk lining. Tortoiseshell buttons. How does he not notice that hole where he gets pervs on as well? What the fuck is this? Dream sequence, obviously. It's weird, huh? I'm sorry, what were you saying? I swam this stretch of a river as a child. With your sister? Hardly. She'd sit on the riverbank, wrapped up in some droll romance. What did she read? She wasn't reading anything except the lips of her latest potential husband. She was always searching for a suitor. Teaming with wildlife this time of year. I think I spotted a stoat. An attempt to divert the conversation away from the topic of marriage, I see. That's only enough room for one investigator in this boat. Only enough room. I keep my legs up and splash poorly, pretending it was an accident. She would be fuming. Never underestimate the wickedness of youth. We've said that before, right? So you told me before, you old curmudgeon. About that night. Said that you sure we're heading in the right direction. There's a body in the water. Oh, I'm sure this was the route last time. You know best. There's a fucking head floating in the water. I see you're wearing the pendant. This whole thing is nothing special. Tell me, were you not wearing it when we met? It was a gift from my mother. It would seem a vile thing to wear it while working. Makes sense. Always kept it close to me though. What do you mean kept? In her boobs. Or underwear. Alice? Sydney, I feel odd. What are you doing, Sydney? Um, that's making me do that, by the way. Sydney, help me! Are we the fucking Ripper? Jesus Christ. That was nasty. Alice! A fucking vertebrae popped out. That's pretty fucked up. Didn't expect that. Jesus Christ, that was pretty horrible. Chapter 3. Still got a little ways to go, it seems, then. I'm afraid I only have the one set. You can perch on the chest or sit on the bed if that's not too vulgar a suggestion. Don't worry, I'll stand. Do you have any news? You truly are a fine detective, Mr. Emerson. I can't also expect the results so soon. I'll retrieve your money. And then she gets killed, right in front of us, by a low-flying knife. Fifty pounds, Mr. Emerson. Thank you, Mrs. Marwood. Your services are proved helpful beyond expectation. Thank you. Polly? Yes? Do you happen any desire, have you any desire to know what happened to your sister? I know what happened, Sydney. My sister was killed by an unassailant while working in a dangerous occupation. 
But you wouldn't you like to know why? What difference would it make? I'm sure knowledge knowing the I'm sure knowledge of criminals preventing from harming others would provide some solace. Perhaps. Or just some justification for Alice's pointless death. And you could provide this? I would try to the best of my ability. The police are already trying their best to find the killer, this so-called Ripper. A combined force of the Trollope police couldn't find their... their cocks with both hands. <laughs> That's more or less the sentiment I was going for, crudeness aside. I'm sorry, I picked it up from a cab driver. And you must remember to drop it before you return home. I'm sure your husband would be most dissatisfied. Perhaps I should stop keeping such poor company. Ha! <laughs> that would be a commendable achievement in this city. One hundred pounds, Mr. Emerson. To be paid on your discovery of the murderer's identity and motive. A hundred pounds? I wish I could refuse the money. Am I a crook? I shan't be paying in advance this time. That sounds agreeable. I'll be in London for the coming month. Stand at the address and see into my sister's matters as well as my own. Then I'll see you soon enough. Sydney? Alice's funeral is tomorrow. I'll be grateful if you could find time to attend. I would be honoured. 1 pm at Kensal Green Cemetery. This is really good. I really like this. Hi guys, Max here. Hope you enjoyed that first episode of The Slaughter there. If you did, remember to leave a like. And let me know what you thought in the comments so far. Consider supporting me on Game Wisp if you enjoy my content. You can vote on my single player Let's Plays, as well as other awesome rewards that you can gain access to. So have a look. And uh, one more reminder, SOS shirts still on sale at a discounted price of 18 bucks. Get them before they go up in price. Link is in the description right now. Go get one while you can. Thank you very much for watching the video, guys. And I'll see you really soon for more The Slaughter. Bye!